The theme for April Rico Street Empowerment is wisdom for greater exploits. Wisdom for greater exploits. But the topic for this evening is the winning mentality. The winning mentality on the second day. Everything you are seeing in your life is a function of what happened in your mind yesterday. Your future is a function of your mentality today. Your life can never be better than whatever your mind is able to comprehend. Looking at life of today, you'll find that every man successful or every country successful is a function of mentality. Winners are simply as losers who refuse to give up. It's not enough to win once, it's continuous winning that we're talking about. Even in the natural, you have to keep winning. You have to what? Keep winning. Nobody will count you a loser if you end up the champion. The present world champions of football, they are, the country is called Argentina. Argentina, in the last World Cup, lost their first match to a country called Saudi Arabia that does not know how to play football. They lost, I think, 3 2 or they're about 2 1 or 3 2, they're about. They lost by one goal difference. Everybody, it was a headline news that Argentina with Messi have lost to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> but they went back and renewed their mentality. I don't know what the coach did when they put the World Cup before their faces. I said, look at this cup. And at the end, they became the world champions. Nobody's counting on how they lost. Everybody's saying the world champions. I don't know how you have lost in the past. You end up a champion. <laughs> if you're a champion and they hit you once and you don't come back, like Mike Tyson, then your championship is useless. Mike Tyson lost once and did not come back again. Other champions, when they lose, they come back. Mike Tyson, after they beat him once, that was the end. They did not come back to... To fight back. That's not the champion. Champions fight. If they fall, they come back, fight again, take back their crown. The only champion of recent of this age I saw was Mike Tyson. He lost it once. Then they come back to defend the championship. Others, when they lose, they'll come back, fight back again, get it back, take it back again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. He said, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God. Many of us talk so much about power, but we don't go for wisdom. And the Bible said, wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 4, 7. So every other thing is the vice principal. If wisdom is that important, then why are you not going after wisdom? I was privileged to speak in Kaduna some years back, invited by Ari Youths. And the Muslim cleric, two of us were invited to speak side by side. A, a known, in fact, amongst the Muslims in this country, his name is the most vocal. I won't call his name. We sat together. He said, Pastor David, I listened to you. I was shocked. That a known Muslim cleric, known. In fact, when he talks, the country does like this. Because he's a radical Muslim cleric. He said, Pastor, I listened to you. And I spoke before him. After I finished speaking, 75% of the hall left. Muslims were not Christians. They said, there's nothing to hear again. You have said all. So I had to stay, stand by the door so that they would not go because the hall was almost empty for him to speak. So I stood so that if I go away, I think Pastor Bismo, who flew with me? Bismo flew with me that day. You, I don't know who went with me. So I said, let me stay here. If I go away, the whole, hall, the whole hall was empty. Nobody to listen to him again. I said, no, if I go there, it will be very blessing. So I had to stand a little for them to remain. I said, stay, stay, stay to here. They said, no, no, you, you have spoken all. Say wisdom. How can a Muslim cleric listen to me? 
I didn't quote Peter, James, and John there, but what I was talking about was the Bible. But I didn't say Genesis chapter 1. But I said, do you know God created you in his own image? But I didn't say Genesis 1. But I was, quoting, I was speaking the Bible. You know wisdom? If I say Genesis 1, they say, no, he's coming to preach here, let's go. So they were wrapped. By the time I was done, they said, no, 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 no. Don't you to hear again. This is your talk. It's finished. The speaker outside, the speaker outside, they said, whoa, we're making noise. And they were following me. <laughs> say wisdom. Say wisdom. It is the principal thing. Please go for wisdom. I said something. I said Nigeria has no problem. True. I said the oil we have is enough to take care of Nigeria. Is that true? And then now you wonder. And I gave you, I said Nigeria oil can go to 6,000 products. But I didn't tell you how you, how you implement it. So nobody can hear me and implement it. Because God told me how they can implement it. But I didn't share that one. Say wisdom. <laughs> so last time I shared it, a man in government, the following day went on one of the top televisions and said, Nigeria will never have a problem. We can use our oil. I said, this man would have consulted me as a Christian and I would have told him the blueprint. But he felt he, was, he couldn't do it till he left office. Nobody can implement it. The implementation I put in my pocket. God told me how to implement that idea, but I can't share it. That's wisdom. <laughs> wisdom does not share all. <laughs> Joseph told Pharaoh that is a problem, but he didn't tell him how to preserve food. The Pharaoh appointed him. You don't go to a meeting and tell them everything. They will take your idea and flush you out of the system. When he tell you, he says, sir, can I sign an agreement with you? on how this can be done. They say, ah, you're a junior staff. We say, if you don't sign, leave it. Sign that if I give you this idea, <laughs> I'll be promoted to this office or this is my share of the business. When they put a lawyer put it on paper, it's okay, this is the idea. Don't ever share your idea free of charge. But I'll give to Nigeria free of charge when the time comes. But that one, everybody will know. I will stay on television and share it. <laughs> so they will not say that they, no, no mortal man can tell me how to implement it, except I tell you, because he told me how, and I won't tell you. Say so wisdom. I pray today you've been impacted with the wisdom of God in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The wisdom of God is our heritage in Christ. And in Matthew 11, verse 19, it says, But wisdom is justified of our children. That is, every child of God is supposed to be swimming in the wisdom of God. So here. It is a master key to all the treasures of life. Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. He that yet these sayings of mine and doeth them is likened unto a wise man. Matthew 7.24. It's not enough to hear. It's important you do what you hear. Wisdom is knowing God's word and doing what you know. Is that clear, sir? If all you do is to know and copy, you are not wise. You are not what? Wise. Our key scripture will be taken from Numbers chapter 13. That's where we are taking the message of today from. Numbers 13, I'll read 1 to 2, 27 to 33. Everybody turn to that scripture. Because some of you, because of this new technology, some of you don't even know where the Bible is. If you say Numbers, now, some of you say it's New Testament. Some people don't open, they don't know Bible again. We know everything is on the screen. Some of you don't come to church with the Bible. <laughs> Please, every you come to church, make sure you have what? You have something to show that either your tablet has scriptures or you carry a Bible. But don't come to church only with diary. In case you meet somebody and say, please, where is John 3.16? Where to we show him now? Always have something to show the Bible. Is that clear? Now, and the Lord, well, they don't have a lot of look at screens. So you don't punish yourself. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, this is God speaking, send thou men that, may, that they may search the land of what? Which I give, yeah, the, which what? Yeah, who is speaking? Which I give unto the children of Israel. That means he has given them already. Is that true? Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a 
man. Everyone a ruler among them. Now, for time's sake, I have to just jump other ones. When you go home, take time to read the whole of 13 in your own, so you can get. It says, send people. I have given Canaan already to you. But send men to go and see how the land look like. So here. Now, after Moses sent 12 of them from the 12 tribes, and they told him, that's Moses, and said, we came unto the land without thou sentest us. And surely, do you hear that? It floweth with milk and water. And this is the fruit of it. This is the proof that the place is a very fertile place. It's right here. It's a very what? Fertile ground. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb, still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. You know why Caleb said so? He knew at that moment they were beginning to be negative. They are saying, the country is good, but hmm, things are tough. They were beginning to speak negatively. I said, quiet! Don't say so. And Caleb said, before Moses said, let us go up what? Caleb was saying, if God has said we should go, then stop talking like that. And possess it, for we are what? In spite of these challenges, Caleb said, we are well able. Where is it coming from? Mentality. But the people, take note though, that went up with him said, we are not able. So two sets of opinions. One said, we are well what? That majority does not carry the vote. In most cases. It's only Nigerian election. Which, for Nigerian election, it's minority. I don't want to go into that one. Before you misquote me. Public opinion sometimes is wrong. Are you getting me? In most cases, it's what? Wrong. The crowd here said, we be not able, 10 of them. So minority was right. Majority was what? Wrong. If you ask an average person in the world now, they say, these are tough. That's the majority opinion. Is that correct? These are not tough. These are better. But the man that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. How do you know when you have not fought? How can you say they are stronger when you have not even gone to war? <laughs> you see my said? And they brought up what? An evil report of the land which they have searched on the children of Israel saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is the land that what? How does he eat people and they went there and come back? Came back. Exaggeration. That's how we exaggerate. You can't make it in this city. You, you magnify the devil. You talk about the devil. You talk about the wizard in your compound. You talk about the witch in your compound. You talk so much about the devil. If you know how the man is a monkoja. That our uncle is a wicked man. He doesn't want any of us to prosper. He prepares the table before you in the presence of your uncle. He said, if he ate people, if the lad is eating of people, then how did they go and come back? They would have been eating. You see, the way you talk, nobody can make it in this country. Forget it. Pastor David is talking there. Nobody. No. Then how are we making it? The, all the people that we saw in it are men of what? Great stature. <laughs> That's a lie. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight. Take note of that word. We were in our own sight as what? Don't think it's these people. That's how many of you talk. Poor me. 
eyes are broke. I'm telling you, I'm broke. I'm really broke. Nothing is working out here. In your own sight, you are broke. Then why are you here? If you are broke, <laughs> you'll be persistent. <laughs> and so we wear. In what? No white people call you poor because you, you call yourself poor. Even the way you look, you look morose. <laughs> Even when, when you are coming to church, you want people to pity you. You move as if you are sick. They say anything is, uh, my children's school fees now. You, you want people to sympathize with you. You look so dejected. If nobody asks you, you say, can't you even see me? You didn't even ask me. Don't you see how I put my hand on my jaw? You just pass me like that. <laughs> that is, you even make sure people see your signs. The reason they call you poor man, because you look, at, you look so poor. That they look at you and say, look at that poor man. Nobody will give you a name you have not given yourself. Now listen carefully, people of God. From the scripture we read, remember Israel had left Egypt. They what? They were heading for where? Canaan. Is that true? Egypt can be likened to where things worked contrary to God's plan and purpose for your life. That's what it can liken Egypt to. A place of failure, a place of defeat, a place of sickness, a place of diseases. Name it. That's can be likened to Egypt. And Canaan is likened to a place of God promises for you in his word. Do you understand it too now? Canaan can be likened to your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, your plans, your victories, prosperous future, peace. Name them. That can be likened to Canaan. And in life, everybody has a goal or a dream. Is that through everybody? One kind of dream. You know, Solomon had the dream of building the temple. Noah had the dream of building Ark. Moses had the dream of delivering the children of Israel, getting to Canaan. Abraham had the dream of giving birth to Isaac. Israel had the dream of getting to Canaan. Everybody, including you. Some of you, your dream is to become a great politician. Some of you have a dream of becoming a Lecturer, each one has one goal or dream. Is that true? You have a goal of becoming a PhD holder in your field. Somehow, somewhere, you have one dream or the other. But along the way, there are giants. They have what? Yes. Your perspective will determine whether that goal will be achieved or not. There are 12 spies sent by Moses. They saw the land flowing with milk and what? Ten of them had evil reports. Two had good reports. Let me say this to you. Challenges are everywhere. <laughs> challenges are what? No one is ignoring challenges. If you see that all the twelve agreed, they were giants. Even Caleb agreed. But Caleb said, the giants are not our problem. I come again. You don't ignore challenges. They are there. But you don't build your faith on the challenges. Faith does not deny the obvious. But faith stands on the integrity of God's word. Caleb did not say there are no giants. No. No. They don't, don't preach that kind of gospel. There's no way you will say today that things are not expensive. They're expensive. True. But I'm not going to put my faith on the expensive. I'm going to put my faith on my God shall supply my needs. Nobody's denying that things are not. <laughs> no. No man of God should preach that way. That would be wrong. We are not saying these things don't happen. But we are not putting our faith on those things. I mean, understand where I'm going. Are you getting me? The 12 spies, all of them had faith. Ten had faith in the giants. Two had faith in God. That's the difference. Many of you, unknowingly, your faith is in the challenges. It's of God. You say, I have, it's a lie. Your faith is more in the challenges. Because as a man thinking in his heart, so you see, whatever occupies your mind most controls your life. 
Your dominant tough will pave the way for your destination. Anything your mind is occupied with constantly, that's what your mind controls your life. Your life moves in the direction of your tough. You can never win if you have not won here. Are you getting what I'm saying? Proverbs 23, verse 7, that's where I quoted. And don't be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 2. What is your perspective to life? What is your worth? Stop having a grasshopper's mentality, otherwise you will not stop hopping. The way you talk will reveal what you believe. When you hear someone talk, you will know what the person believes. It's out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. When you hear someone talk, you know what the person believes. Matthew 12, 34. Stop discussing problems and start thinking solutions. We, our discussions are full of problems. Nothing is working. Nothing can work. Everything is going bad. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mark 9, I pray today that your mind will agree with God's word and things will begin to happen in your favor. Yeah. Paul speaking said, now listen. In my study, the Holy Ghost opened my eyes. Paul made a statement that I would have come unto you, but Satan hindered us through. He's saying, he did not say there was no challenge. But the same Paul said, in spite of the hindrance, I can do all of this. So he was contradicting the hindrance. He was saying, I know Satan, you are trying to stop me, but I will come. Get it clear. Are you understand what I'm talking about? Possibly metallurgy. He said, I would have come up to you, but Satan hindered us. That means there was a challenge. Do you understand now? Challenges come to everyone. But Paul said, I don't care about that. I'm coming. I can, Philippians 4, 13. I can do how many things? He said, through Christ, that resistance can't stop me. I'm not understanding mentality. I'm not understanding me. Hello? Are you getting what I'm talking about? Now, I said, faith does not ignore the obvious, but contradicts the contradiction from the mentality. Is that clear? Permit me to put it that way. Paul said, <laughs> Satan can't stop me from coming to preach the gospel. He tried to hinder me. Aish. Wherefore would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. But did that stop us? No, he came again. True? On blast scriptures. So let no preacher make the truth. Challenges will come, but they can't stop you. He refused to magnify the devil. Is that true? At the point, I always said, God, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know. For him to say, Paul, I know, that means that he challenged him. Listen, Satan could have said so if he never challenged him and failed. Satan said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, because I've challenged Paul. He could not submit to me. He refused to submit. He overcame me. Do you understand? Before anybody can recognize you, you have overcome the person. He said, I challenged him, but he could not stop. His mentality was too big. So I know him. But for you, I will challenge you and stop you. That's a source of scaffold. <laughs> Do you understand mentality? He said, Jesus, I know. Jesus is somebody who will never allow. Did he challenge Jesus? Yes, he tempted him. But did you, did you overcome him? No. Challenges come to everyone, including Jesus. He tempted him through, but he overcame him. So from where did he overcome the devil? Where did he overcome the devil? From the mind. Don't think that he over, don't think that when he said they took him up to the mountain, don't think they carried him like a kite. No. It was from where? Maybe they took him up to the high mountain. Don't you don't they, don't they lift Jesus like this and put him? No, 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 it's from here. It's from where? Have you not stayed like this? You hear a voice say to you, you will fail. You will so fail. Then you get up. He said, true, true. <laughs> He's the one. He's the one battling with your he said, you'll soon die. You go and look at the mirror. See the way you have, look at your face. You are so ugly. Which man will marry you like this? Then you say like this. 
Am I really ugly? You, are, you, you have accepted the word of the devil. He said, you now call your friend. Look at me. Do I look, am I ugly? He said, why did you ask? I don't, nothing, but I just want to ask. It's a lie. It's from your mind. He has, look at you. He said, you, nobody will marry you. See your legs now. Okay, look at the middle. And foolishly, you now look at your legs. <laughs> it's all looking at the word of God. And fearfully and wonderfully made. It's all look at the word of God. You now still, you say, hey, true, true, this is my legs. See, see, see Sally, woman, Sally. <laughs> He's the one speaking <laughs> to you. And you agreed with him. When he said, look at your legs, he said, shut up. I'm created the image of God. I'm wonderful and fearfully made. He will not leave you. But you said that you lost in your mind. He said, true. Hey, see my nose is even very big. Shout hallelujah. Think. Talk. And ask possibly, and act possibilities. And act what? Stop concentrating on the obstacles of life. Look out for the opportunities in the obstacles. Something happened in 1 Samuel chapter 17. There was a man called Goliath. That word Goliath is a descriptive name. Many people don't know. It's not the name of the man. Goliath means giant. Means what? That is how, you know, if you say, um, in this part of the world, they call Amayanabo means king. It's not a man's name. It's a description of a title holder. Do you understand what I mean now? Is it, like I say, president. President is not a name. It's an office. Goliath means Giant. Means what? Now, some of you, what is facing is the Goliath of poverty. Some are faced with Goliath of fear. Do you understand now? Now, this man was a giant. David was not the only child of God in Israel. And there was nowhere prophecy said David would be a king. Read your Bible. Nowhere. There was no prophecy that David would be king. But it was mentality that enhanced his dignity. God gave the same covenant promise to all of them. But David was the only one with a different mentality. Who had a winning mentality? His brothers saw Goliath as too big to be challenged. Why David saw him as too small to insult the God of Israel? See perspective? I come again. The brothers of David saw Goliath as too big to be what? Challenge. Why David saw him as too small to insult the God of Israel. Perspective. So they lost in their mind because they saw him as a giant. While he won in his mind because they saw him as a dwarf. So here. He won from where? From his mind. So here. Losers talk about how things are hard. Winners talk about how they can make it in hardship. Repeat. <laughs> Losers, all the year they talk, things are tough, things are tough, things are tough, things are tough. That's a loser. A winner will always talk, I can make it in the midst of hardship. Winning begins from your mind. From where? You cannot win on the outside without first winning from the inside. Are you getting me? Every winning starts from where? From the side. I won first from my mind before I won physically on the outside. When we finished Bible school and I called my mates and I said to them, I'm going to Port Harcourt. Everybody was privileged to talk with me. He said, no, Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt? So they said, come down. Where? Port Harcourt? No, 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 no. Don't go to Port Harcourt yet. Because before I came to Port Harcourt, nobody has made it in this part of this country. Not one. Every big ministry in Nigeria, in Nigeria I mean, is Abuja and Lagos. Lagos number one, then Abuja came later. Every ministry that has money, that has impact, 
a second of blessing that also who was able to make it in Ibiza. Every other person was Lagos. So he said, no, no, if you really want to make it, stay in Lagos first. Lagos. Lagos is the moving area. Lagos is moving. When I said Port Harcourt, they said, no, Port Harcourt. Because it has never happened. But I saw from God's word to renew my mind that when I sent you without post and script, lucky anything. And the major thing I talked about was that boy, you won't get money in Port Harcourt because there's no money there. But my mentality was that if God is my sender, then money will be anywhere. It's no respecter of persons. So I first and foremost won in my mind before I'm winning now in the physical. So the wealth was not now. The wealth came from my mind first. Say here. Every poor man is mentally poor. You didn't hear me? Hmm? You don't become rich with money. You become rich from your mind. You lose from your mind. You win from your mind. Did you hear me? Victorious minds talk about health. Talk about wealth. Weak minds talk about disease and sicknesses. Stop talking like a slave. I start talking like a son and daughter of God. Slave ship mentality is destructive. Stop talking like a victim and start talking like a victor. Accept only what God says about you from scriptures. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Stop magnifying your problems and challenges. Stop talking about, you're not the only one going through them. People are going through them. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And conquer them. So I hear you are not the only one going through challenges, my friend. You are not the only one. I went through challenges. My wife went through challenges. You are not the first person. You are not the first to say they don't have money. We have stayed without money, yet my mind was rich. Listen, if I'm talking now, you say I'm talking now. I was talking like this. If you go and get my tapes of 1997, 98, you just, you know, I, I said, listen, I'm fed. If you get, look, they should bring those messages. My words are not. I said, listen, I'm one of the wealthiest preachers on earth. From where? No shishi physically. I said, I'm rich. I'm not. I said, take your seats. Old members I said, take your seats. A time is coming, you will run to enter this church. Long ago. From where? I saw you before you came. From where? I saw wealthy multi billionaires in this church before they became billionaires. Stop talking like a poor man. You are not poor. It's your language that has made you poor. So I hear. Do you know why? The price God paid on your behalf shows your value. Of great. You're a product of great value. God couldn't have given Jesus for you. Then you, you look down on yourself. He you said you're a chosen, a royal, and holy. How can God call you a nation? And then you are just looking down on yourself. He didn't call you a personal. He said, <laughs> God, you mean God does not know how to speak English? He had chosen what? A royal and holy, a peculiar, that is so much the place of who has called out of death a marvelous light. Mind is so powerful. Mind is so what? On my own, I, I meditate a lot when I see that like this. I was just looking at the nation of Israel between yesterday and today. I said, how can a nation like this be this stubborn and resilient? A nation of less than 10 million people? Yes, sir. The entire world has come against them. <laughs> they are not shaking. The whole world, United Nations met. Yeah, the people, they said, no way. What you want to do, we'll do it. From where? From their mind. Are, I just look at them and say, look, people are just deceiving themselves. So if you want to achieve anything, nobody can stop you. If the entire world cannot, the entire world, the entire world can't stop you. That is how determined they are. If they want to do something, let the whole United Nations hold a meeting. They will do that if they want to do. They said they should not move capital to Jerusalem. You remember that time? They said, in fact, they move it. The entire world voted against them. Only America at that time, during Donald Trump, voted for them. But they moved the capital to Jerusalem. Till today. They say, you divide Jerusalem, they say, for what? I, I, 
I, I was not watching them. I said, what kind of people like this? That is a tiny nation of what? Less than 10 million people. With 100 and something million people in Nigeria. <laughs> what? Look, it is not number. It's what? Mentality. What is it? You are failing not because of the economy. You are failing because of your mind. You will fail again. Yeah. You are saying you will not fail again. Yeah. Please stop this grasshopper's mentality. Stop talking about the devil. And start talking about what God can do. Focus on God's word and not your challenges. He said they looked up to their light and their face were not what? Ashamed. Psalm 34 verse 5. So here. Look beyond the present and see a great future ahead of you. Stop justifying your failures and see yourself succeeding. Are you getting me? I, I would have succeeded if not. Some even blame children they have part. Some even say, I would have said if not for my children. That is your mind. Some even blame children that God gave to them. They say, I would have made it if not. No, I have a newborn baby in my hand. So is it the newborn baby that is making you to fail? Tell yourself it's your mind. It's your what? There are people who have given birth, one in the hand, one at the back, and still succeeded. John Wesley's mother gave birth to 19 children to the one years. She was a super success. You only two, three, four, five. You are not talking about your failure as if you are the reason for the failure. John Wesley's mother gave birth to 19 children in 21 years. And all of them were great. All of them were what? Now you have two with five hands to guess. Want to carry bucket, want to carry to go to bedroom, yet you are still complaining. I would have made it and I would have been walking. Please, no. If you want to make it first, move this place. Where? 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 The day your mind is made up, you make it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, did you read in Portagot today? Yes. Did you read in Portagot? Set your mind is power. Did you read in Portagot? Yes. Did you make up your mind to come to church? Yes. Simple. Why didn't they stop you? <laughs> then come again. Did you, now, those of you watching from outside, it rained in Portacourt. The weather was very terrible. Those of you at the headquarters and those of you in other satellite churches, uh, branches in Portacourt, did you, did this, did the rain stop you from coming to church? Where? From where did you come to church from? So the day you make up your mind to succeed, you succeed. The reason for every man's failure is because the mind has not been made up to win. So here. The day you make up your mind to say, if I perish, I perish, I'm going to make it, you make it. When we started ministry, I made a statement. I said, if any part-time pastor beat me ministry, I will resign. Ask my wife and a few of them were with me. Pastor B and Charles and the rest of them were here. As if any part-time pastor in this world get a result more than me, I will resign as a full-time pastor. I said, somebody doing it part-time will match me doing it full-time. I said, no way. It's only part-time, me full-time. I said, full-time, I must make it full results. I can't give it a full-time approach and not get outstanding results. I said, if any part-time man beat me in this ministry, I will not work again. You mean full-time? Do you know full-time? Full-time. When I give it a full approach, I must get full-time benefits. Because my provision is a division. Part-time man will be going to work. Me, I will read the Bible Monitor 9. And then pray for the sick. He will not pray for sick and get more healed than me who is, praying, who is reading the Bible Monitor 9. No way. When I pray, they will get more healed than him. From where? From where? You conquer your world from where? You are get defeated from where? You fail from where? You succeed from where? You became poor from where? You became rich from where? Everything is from mind. It charts the course of your life. Until you have a winning mentality, you will never be declared a winner. Shout hallelujah. Well, I'll share with you ways to develop a winning mentality. I just share two of them and then tomorrow will be very thick. Tomorrow will be very good again. 
ways to develop a winning mentality. Number one, go for knowledge. Go for what? Go for knowledge. In Proverbs 24, verse 5, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases. That strength is not Muslim. It's talking about, <laughs> it's talking about you. Increases what? Strength. It's not talking about physical boxing. That's not what he's talking So, your level of knowledge is what will determine your level of winning. If you faint in the days of your adversity, your strength is small. Proverbs 24 verse 10. If things are working the opposite way, then what you carry is what? Small. Say here. Are you getting me? You cannot win beyond what you know. Let me say this to you. Winning is from where? The mind. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about from Romans chapter 4, 17 to 21. Look at the man Abraham. This man had no child till 100. Till when? 200. He had no child. The wife was 90 years old at that time. That may look like a defeat. Is that true? But God said to him, look it, as he said, I've made thee a father of what? Yes. Before him, we believed. Even God who quickened the dead and called those things will be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was for such as seed be. And be not weak in what? He considered, where do you consider things from? Right. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about 100 years old, neither the deadness of what? Sarah's womb. He staggered not at every staggering is from where? Oh my. He staggered not at this is means Satan you must have come to him and said, Listen, listen, you are impotent. Two, you are 100. Three, your wife is 90. Four, no, she has passed menopause to papa pause. So his mind was hitting. Bim, bim, bim. Don't, I tell you, challenges come to everyone. Don't say that challenges don't come is a lie. Challenges come to what? But those who want to win, don't shake. Through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He was fully persuaded, means he was fully convinced in his mentality. That what God has promised able to perform. He said, look, no matter what happens, I don't shake on the inside. I'm going to end up a winner because whatever God has said can't fail. I may not understand it. You win when you stand on the integrity of God's word. His knowledge of God was too big. Abraham has so much knowledge of God that he said, look... <laughs> What God told me, no matter what happens, can fail. Is that true, sir? He has so much knowledge of God to doubt God. In Isaiah 26, verse 3, let me show you something. The Bible says, Thou will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because it was on thee. You know what I mean? When everything comes against your mind, stand on the word. Stand what? That's knowledge. And you win. Life story. During the glory reign, many of you didn't know, Pastor KK's twin son was on oxygen. He has four children. The last boys were twins. They are twins. They are twins. Now, one of them, Daniel, was at the point of death while he was here. When I mean dead, I'm not talking about Gapsing for dead, it was gone. The boy was on oxygen. We had to charter a higher air ambulance to carry him from Wadi to Lagos. It was that serious. He would call me one day, he was in tears, he said, Daddy, the only thing I want is Daniel to leave. He was in tears. I was ministering, talking, 
I said, call our father. We we'll join faith all together to make sure this boy lives. Nobody knew. He said, this was the only scripture I quoted that kept him alive. He said, when Satan tells him your son will die, he said, my mind is on thee. All these prayers can't go in vain. I came here for you. He said, that God, say, can't you see that Daniel is gone? He said, he stood on the word. I can't come here that my fathers will pray and he will not leave. He said, Daddy, do you know that? My <laughs> he said, I wrote 16 prayer requests. Boy, boy, boy was, it was 16. He said, no, nothing I wrote. All I wrote is, Daniel must leave. Number one. Daniel must leave. I don't need anointing. I don't need it. Daniel must leave. <laughs> he said, that is the only thing I wrote 16 times on my expectation form. Daniel must leave. Daniel must leave. I don't want anointing. I don't want money. Daniel was. <laughs> Bishop, we didn't know our father <laughs> had to send people. The wife went there. We were praying. Everyone was praying. Now, the miraculous thing is this. The doctor said they saw his kidneys as packed up. Liver not working. Every organ failed. But he went for a checkup about a month or two months ago. They said, excuse me? What are they saying? That when he came, they didn't want to tell them that they saw a, a mass in his system, which was looking like a cancerous mass. So they were, they felt this boy would not survive. He was vomiting blood, stealing blood. Everything coming out of his body was blood. But it's 100% perfect. 100% what? 100% perfect. Why? He won because his mind was stayed on the world. When Satan comes to you, you will soon die. Tell him, shut up. I will live to declare the works of God. He said, look, oh, you will be so poor that poor people will call you poor. He said, shut up. He was made poor that I might be rich. He said, ah, you might be rich. They just sack you from work. Oh. He said, shut up. When one door is closed, seven are open. He comes to you again. He comes to you again. Listen, you will not get married. You have already entered 40 something. Who will marry you? Say, shut up. He makes all things beautiful in his time. There's a man made for me. He says, if that man is there, look at your age. He say, shut up. Stay on the integrity of the world. You end up a winner. And I declare you a winner in the name of Jesus. If you had staggered, they would have lost it. Let me show you something. Romans, sorry, Hebrews chapter 11, 17 to 19. The same Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up what? Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. To the other, his only what? Of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure he said offer Isaac as a sacrifice he said I don't doubt I'm going to win God you have the ability to raise him up even if I offer him do you understand what he want every time Abraham he said look at Abraham I've said that I bear you so anytime something is coming up your mind must not shake from the word of God no matter what happens if you want to win stand on the Integrity of the word. Let the thing go contrary. Stand on the word. So that will shake you. Ba, ba, ba. Stand on the word. You'll be declared the winner. You will win. That I said, said if you faint in the devil, your strength is one small. That means the word in you is small. The word in you is what? Small. <laughs> we have stayed here. We are challenges have come face to face. <laughs> and we refuse to panic. You think challenges have not come to us? Who told you? Even till now, challenges come. They will tell you, see, 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 the bill is so, 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 so he think, he think, I said, shut up. The owner of it, we build it. He said, hey. 
you have started this your quotation. I said, I'm not the owner. The owner will build it. He will come again. Okay, if the owner will build, look at the amount in the account. Look at the one they quoted to you. Is it the same thing? He said, shut up. I'm not the owner. He will come again. I know you are not the owner, but look at the amount. <laughs> I said, I refuse to look at the amount. It's not my business. It will leave you. And they need to be going on. But if I stay now, and in my subconscious, that's what some of you do. Hey, 200 billion. Now, how much is it? 30 something billion. That means 30 something going by 200. We won't finish the project again. I'm talking about this answer. Hey, you have, you have been flawed at that point. He has flawed you. But when he's talking, say, shut My mind must not accept your nonsense. He talks to you in your subconscious. Even as we're in church now, we're talking to you. Don't mind where Pastor David is talking. Don't mind him. He, he, okay, listen. You, primary six. And every day you'll say you'll be a millionaire, primary six. Do you even know how to write your name? You don't even know how to write your name. So how can you become rich? That Jesus was made poor. It's not for people like you. <laughs> and then you stay like this. He says, true. He was made poor for these allies, not for me. <laughs> My friend, whatever this book says is for you. It's for who? It's for you. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Number two, let me go on. Associate with the courageous. How do you, ways of developing um, meaning mentality is associating with the what? Courageous. It's by associating with the courageous. In Proverbs 27, verse 17, it's an iron sharpened iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. Iron what? Sharpened iron. You cannot keep a failure as a friend and experience winning. You cannot keep what? As a friend and experience winning. Choose friends that will enhance your winning mentality. Who you follow determines what follows you. Caleb was close to Joshua. Two of them. Can you see the relationship? Caleb was with who? Joshua. He was not with the ten spies. A man of God of blessed memory, his name is called Ben Senator Hosa. Archbishop Edaosa was a fearless man. And Bishop Edaosa got his boldness from Archbishop Ben Senator <laughs> When Edaosa wants to talk, he does not care who is on seat. That or that city of Edaosa came from Ben Senator that boldness you see, where the court talks and everybody's shaking, came from who? That was, the wisdom came from it at the way, but boldness came from it also. My closeness to Oedek is the reason why I'm like this. I'm naturally a gentle person, but when I talk, you see the other side of me, you say, what, what kind of person is this? Most of you even get scared when I talk. Association enhances your value. Are you getting what I'm talking about? There are some things I'm doing today. I couldn't have done them if I'm not close to Edebo. Stop having a dream of 16 by 20 and be working with somebody who has 4 by 6 dream. Do you hear what I said? If your dream is 16 by 20, don't hang around 4 by 4, 4 by 6 person. The person will weaken your spirit. Any association is either taking you up or bring you down. There are people you associate with, they throw you down. Because you are talking this way, they are talking this way. You are talking about mansion, they are talking about bungalow. You can't have a tower dream. I'm talking with a man who is talking about Tash dream. No Tash house? So I hear. You want to win? You want to win? Then hang around winners. Stay around what? Don't stay around losers. Don't stay in the company of losers. If I tell you something, I'm not a politician, but if I'm a politician, I will never be in a opposition party. 
I will always join the winning party, winning team. That's why I don't have a permanent team in football. I don't have a permanent team. Once the team starts losing, I leave them. <laughs> That's me. I used to be a backup fan. I said, if Baka stop winning, I go to Real Madrid. <laughs> I don't used to like Real Madrid before, but I, I enjoy good with, now I enjoy Man City football, not because I like Man City. But they are winning, so I've been, I've been watching their football. <laughs> if they lose, I won't watch them again. My team is Arsenal, but, and they are winning, so. But if Man City start winning, I watch their football. I don't have permanent team. Barcelona was the time losing, I left them. Now they are winning again, I'm watching them. That's my own. I will never join a losing team, nothing. Not like I believe in it, I'm not going to join. I've never joined losing team for what? Don't stay around the person who is not winning. We'll be talking problem, 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 problem. See what the way Nigeria is? Can't you see how the country is going down? You see what you'll be hanging around the person? The person will kill your spirit. See the way this country is going? Nothing is working yet. Nothing is working. Nothing is working. Then why are you here? If not, it's working. Well, why, what are you doing here? Are you getting <laughs> Can you, 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 you're playing football, you're not joining the losing team. They, they, even if you are Shelfie United, won't you leave? <laughs> you know Shelfie United. You know Shelfie United. Yeah, the bottom of the EPL. Sheffield United. They have what are fifteen or seventeen points. <laughs> even if you are Sheffield United, would you would you join the Man U and other ones? Would you join Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City United, Sheffield United? <laughs> Is that I like the team? What do you like them for to be losing? <laughs> before even they, before they even play the match, you already know the score. It's only Jesse that deal with them. I say, I say Jesse has a problem. How can Sheffield United draw with Jesse? <laughs> Jesse. That is everybody was getting three points from Sheffield. When it came to Jesse, they'll draw too. So get it three points. I said, no. <laughs> you, you have heart to remain with Jesse. <laughs> you are still shouting the blues, the blues. <laughs> blues are number 10, not number 9. No. <laughs> Amen. When, when the blues start winning, we'll come back to watch you. <laughs> My friend. Stop hanging around failures. Shout hallelujah. Number three. Amen. Recounting past victories and testimonies. Recounting what? Past testimonies and victories. Ways to develop winning mentality. Recounting what? Past testimonies and victories. If you want to keep one minute, just go back and recount. This thing has been done before. It can be done again. You know, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, 34 to 37, that was what David did. He recounted what God did with him. He said, God gave me the lion. He gave me the bear. He gave me this uncircumcised flister. He said, well, this person has done it before. This one has done it before. Then I took and do it. Are you getting me? God did it in the life of this person. I did the life of this person, so I can do it in my own life. That way you keep winning. You keep what? Winning. Just to recount. But sometimes, God, you did it for me this. You can do it again. Even if you didn't do it for you, you did it for somebody else. So they count it and then look at it to encourage you and then say, it can be done in my own life. So I hear. David said, if God gave me the lion, he gave me the bear, he will give me this uncircumcised flister. He began to recount. God will give you victories after today. Let me say this before I close in the next four minutes. Don't allow people's opinion to control your thinking pattern. I'm closing. Don't allow people's opinion to control your thinking pattern. Are you getting me? Because the opinion of people in most cases is wrong. 
is what? I repeat, don't allow, even your parents' opinion towards you in most cases is wrong. Quit looking at the photographs of failure Satan brings to your mind if you want to win. I repeat, quit looking at the photographs of what? Of failures Satan brings to your mind. He will show you your past failures. Don't accept them. Listen, if you want to win, Satan will keep bringing past failures. He will tell you you have been defeated in this area. You lost it in this area. You failed in this area. Please wipe them off. You remember what Paul said? He said, one thing I do, not God. Forgetting the things that are worth. When Satan brings past failures, put them off. Say, no, it's not me. The righteous fallen seven times and what? That's up again. He will remind you, but you failed before. Even in school, you were a dropout. You failed in life. Your business crashed. What are you talking about? Don't allow those photographs to remain in your mind. Take them off. If you want to win, so I hear. I said winners are simply S losers who refuse to give up. I said winners are what? Who refuse to give up. He will tell you, but you did IVF the first time you failed, second time you failed, third time you failed, so why are you trying again? Shut up! But look at, look at you. The first man want to marry you said no. Second one said no. Third one said no. Nobody will marry you again. Look at your face. Tell him you are stupid. Now I'm born again. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. I will be married. Don't allow the photograph of your past failure ever remain in your memory. Wipe them off. Paul said, one thing I do, God won't do it for you. That God will not do for you. You have to do it yourself by renewing your mind with the word of God. Shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Satan shouldn't determine who you are. Not even yourself should determine who you are. The only picture you have about yourself should be the picture from the word of God. Listen, there are four pictures everybody goes through. The picture of people about you. Don't accept it. It's faulty. Second picture of Satan about you. Don't accept it. The third picture is the picture of you about yourself. Don't accept it. There are three pictures you must not accept. Listen carefully. The picture of people about you. Don't accept because people's opinion is not the right opinion. Are you getting me now? Second picture is the picture of the devil about you. Don't accept it. The third picture is the picture of you about yourself. Don't accept it. The only picture you should accept is God's picture about you. Are you getting me? Out of there, are, everybody has four pictures that controls you. Four, four, four. One, people's opinion. That's why you must not live by people's opinion. Are you getting me? Don't say what are people saying. Just whatever they say is irrelevant. Ask what is God saying. The second picture, Satan has so much negative opinion about you. Don't accept it. Including your own picture about yourself because your picture about yourself is faulty. The only picture you have to accept is the picture of God about you. And that means anything this word of God says, that's the only thing you should accept. Am I talking to you? Every other picture is faulty. Have you not seen yourself? Sometimes you see yourself, you even look yourself, you say, I can't make it. And all of a sudden, a word came inside you that you can make it. True? So, which means if you keep walking by your own opinion, you even get defeated. To win, you must walk by the word of God. So here. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now listen. Where you broke right? Before I came to Prakot, the opinion here is that people from here don't make it the ministry. I don't mean secular work. The British believe that only people from the Yoruba part of Nigeria make it a ministry. Through? Through? Yes. That was the perspective. That picture is not correct. Is it correct? No. no. I've redefined it. They said, look, if you must make it, you have to come from the West. And God is not a racist. God is not a what? So a racist. We are one in Christ. The picture I have about the Bible is what I took. I said, God is not a respecter of persons. So, even me, I don't look at myself. I look at the world 
of God. So the other three pictures must be discarded. You must throw them to the trash. Picture of the devil, not accepted. Picture of people, not accepted. Picture of yourself. Not Only the picture should be the picture of God about you. So here. And that is what will make you a winner. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So, I close with this statement. Discipline what you hear. Discipline what you read. Discipline what you watch on television. And discipline what you watch on social media. <laughs> you know what I mean? They are very powerful. Every picture you have gotten, you got them from those areas. Either you watch social media and you had a faulty picture. Are you getting me? You must discipline what you watch if you want to win. Do you know if you get up every day and watch someone pouring poison inside the drink of a husband and a wife? Every day, the day they want to give you a drink, the first thing they will call to you is poison. You look at the person pouring. You say, oh, he doesn't want to put poison inside. Because of what you saw constantly. Did you hear me? If every day you get up, you keep seeing negative things, you keep hearing negative things, your mind will grab it. Don't think your mind not grabs it. Your mind grabs whatever picture you see. Do you understand me? That's why you must censor what you watch. You must censor what you hear. You don't just watch everything. Are you getting me, sir? Not everything you should watch. Not everything you should listen to. You must censor them. You must discipline what gets your eyes peaks. You must discipline what your ear picks. When COVID was on, it got to a point, if you flip every channel, they would draw one thing with so many things like this. Every channel you flip, they say 200 and something thousand have died in Illinois. 100,000 fear dead in Wilcoxon. Now, 200 people fear dead in Congo. 300 people fear dead in... So, even if you're moving, <laughs> you will be hearing fear dead, fear dead, fear dead. So, small temperature, that fever that used to hold you before, you now say, oh, it's not COVID. <laughs> You are not hearing such. You kept hearing himself. Too, himself. There's too much news here. <laughs> Go to, he said they are new. What? Most of you have not had this news. <laughs> this news. If you want to hear news, you hear from Genesis to Revelation. To your time of that is over, you won't finish this news. <laughs> Please make sure you are loaded with the word of God. Even when you're watching television, make sure you have loaded so you can sense all. Dare to believe only what God is saying. Be positive about life. Say to me, I'm not a failure. I can't be a failure. Until I win. Nobody will win. I must be declared the winner. I believe only what God says. And that's only what will stand. Any other thing, I will not accept it. It's only what God has said about me. That is the truth. I am a winner. I can never be a loser. Rise to your feet. Shout a better amen. Shout a loud amen. Shout a victorious amen. Tomorrow I'm going to go deep in the third day. Be the what? Oh, I'm going to dissect something. Very, very loaded. Is a common denominator globally. But I will not tell you until tomorrow. <laughs> Are you getting me now? Ah, it will make you, the wisdom of God will not make you stand above others. It just makes you to be here for greater exploit. Exploit starts from where? That's what we have said today. Where does exploit start from? From where? From where? From where? From where? You win and lose from where? Hmm? Just 
be rich from here, you'll be rich physically. It's not an appointment. Just be wealthy here first. It's a wealth is a function of man's capacity to think. Just be wealthy in your mind. You'll be wealthy in life. Be defeated here, you'll be defeated. Hmm? I saw a boxer, I went with Tavim, I told them, I said, this boxer will lose. The one they pulled the microphone, they said, um, the fear on his face, I said, he will lose. Fight has not started, I said, you don't need to fight, he will lose. And he lost the fight. The fear on him made him to lose. Some people, they've not even traveled. They've already been defeated. They say, if I go there, they said things are very tough. Is it true? <laughs> you have not gone. You have not gone. You are already a failure now. Is it true? They said nobody helps people in that place. Is it true? He said, I will leave my church. From whence come what? From who? From God? Why are you depending on people to help you? You see your picture. You succeed. Yes. You are going to pray. Every faulty picture in my mind. It's a casting down imaginations. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Look at this scripture. Casting down imagination. You know what imagination means? Image formation. Something that has formed an image in your subconscious. And everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bring to captivity every thought that is obedient to Christ. Whatever is contrary to God's purpose for my life that my mind has ever accepted. I cast it down. From today, mind, speak to your mind. Say, mind only accept the word of God. Anything. Have you ever said like this? You just begin to think nonsense about yourself. People do it. You just stay like this. You just see yourself defeated. You just see yourself good for nothing. Nobody told you, you start crying. They say, why am I crying? They say, I'm good for nothing. He said, you are not, you are not so easy. No, I'm telling you, I'm good for nothing. Where am I? <laughs> Satan has held you captive in your subconscious. You say, I come against everything that contradicts the word of God in my mind. He said, cast it down. That means don't accept it. You are moving like this. You are moving. All of a sudden, you hear your voice. What if you die now? Yes. You are driving, you know. It's, you say, what if now? If this motor now fall into a lagoon? Have you not heard it before? He yes. said, you, if you jump, if you move down lagoon, will you survive? Why will you think that your motto will jump into a lagoon? Why is a psychiatric problem in the Western world? These are the things. They just stay like they get depressed. They just stay, nothing. Just, it's depression just comes. No, depression. Yeah, there's no depression. If you go to the Western world, depression. Oh, people. There's no depression here now. Is there any depression? You don't have light. Is it any problem? Do you have light before? You don't have light, it's normal thing now. <laughs> People don't have light, they die. Just not having light, they die. Do you know? This is a, it's a very funny society. In Africa, yeah, you don't have a problem. Somebody has a bad day, you don't give her flowers, she can die. Just not giving her flowers, she can just die. He said, Do you know he, on my birthday he did not give me flower? <laughs> and I feel like dying. He said, You want to die because of flower? He said, Yes. If he lost me, he would have given me flower. If you carry flower in Africa, <laughs> she will call you and say, Excuse me. So, my birthday, now flower where you see by flower. In order, your mates, they buy motor, you not flower. <laughs> she will, she will, he's in front of everybody. She'll say, See this man, oh. Now, flower, where you take on, give me flower. I beg, carry your flower, go home, I beg you. But if you don't buy flower there, hmm. do you know he saw me and did not tell me he loved me? He's, I feel like dying. <laughs> Africa. The man will look you and say, if you go die, make it die. <laughs> people, people are depressed. They are what? They are depressed. No neighbor. Neighbor with you. Two of you can stay for five years without greeting each other. Without saying good morning. <laughs> An old woman left Nigeria to the United States. 
She stayed with her children. When she came, I said, Papa, no go again. I said, why no go again? I said, I go wake up for money, no neighbor. <laughs> nobody to greet from morning to night. My children go go out for money, come back for night. And then they see them. Me too, I will get up. Look here, nobody. Look here, nobody. And then they go again. I said, my no go again. I said, no, they go. Which kind of country? Where I go go? At least here, we go see somebody say, how are you there? Yeah, nobody. <laughs> Do you know this place is better? At least you can see somebody say, how are you? In the Western world, no greeting, no. In fact, if you greet too much, they look at you, are you as if you are not okay? <laughs> People die. People what? Die out of depression. Yeah. So you say everything contrary to God's word in my mind. I cast it out. I will only accept what God's word says. Go ahead and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Thing that is contrary to God's word in my mind. Cast it out. Put your hand on your mind and cast it out. Everything contradicting God's word in my mind, cast it out in the name of Jesus. I'll accept the word of God. I cast out everything contrary to God's word. Cast it out in the name of Jesus. Cast it out in the name of Jesus. I accept only the word of God. Cast it out in the name of Jesus. Cast it out in the name of Jesus. I accept only the truth of the word. Jesus mighty name. I'll give you an assignment. Very serious assignment. When you go back, look at your life. Look at one area you want to win. One area you want to what? And put a scripture of that area face where you can see it. And then meditate on Isaiah 26 verse 3. Whose mind is stayed on thee. So when you look at that scripture of anything and Satan comes to tell you this thing can happen. Tell yourself it will happen. Every morning you look at it, you say, this can't happen. You say, it will happen. He will tell you, this can happen, it will happen. If his physical picture, put the picture before you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you know why most times, intentional life, put the finished cathedral before for dancing. I'm seeing that picture, so that picture must come to pass. If his physical, put the picture of what you want. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Are you hearing me? And then look at us, when he tells you, this can't happen. You can never be the manager. He said, no way. Put the executive seat. Put yourself sitting on that seat. And he said, you can never be a manager. You will remain a clerk. He said, no way. You can't be a graduate and end of a clerk. I decree from this day, whatever your mind picks from scriptures will become real in your life. this mind can grasp in the name of Jesus becomes a reality in your life. Amen. Abraham saw it and he became it. And you are the seed of Abraham. If Abraham saw it and became it, whatever you have seen from the word of God, I decree you become it in the name of Jesus. Amen. All that Abraham saw, not one failed, not one. And as a seed of Abraham, the promise has been made to you. Right now, whatever you see from your mind becomes yours in the name of Jesus. Amen. God the mighty said that we have imagined nothing can be restrained from them. Whatever your mind has grabs as imagination from God's world becomes a reality in the name of Jesus. Amen. And everything also corrupts your mind, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nothing stops you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Give him thanks and praise. Give him thanks and praise. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. 
the God who has declared you a winner from bad will never allow you to lose in battles. As a seed of Abraham, may your testimonies be forever. Just like we are talking of Abraham to today, that's how your testimony will speak for generations. Go in peace. Return tomorrow victories. In Jesus' mighty name.